Hi Lobos, today I will be talking about the history of leprechauns, so let's get started. So starting with what is a leprechaun, well the legend has it that a leprechaun is a type of fairy that stands about as tall as a three-year-old child. It's believed there are no female leprechauns to be found. According to stories, the leprechaun is actually a shoemaker who spends most of his time making and fixing shoes. Where it starts, this all started in the 8th century. These mystical creatures were ingrained into Irish culture even today. Over the years, the history of leprechauns has become associated with everything green and are now depicted as old men dressed in a hat and suit of this color. Why is the leprechaun considered lucky? Well, the leprechaun story says capturing these small creatures will secure a wee bit of luck in addition to three wishes. They have become associated with the luck of the Irish, which is one of the reasons they remain so popular today. Hi, my name is Carter, and I want to tell you the history of St. Patrick's Day. The celebration started all the way back in 1631, when the church established a day of feasting in honor of St. Patrick. He had been the patron saint of Ireland, who was estimated to have died in the 5th century. In 12 centuries, where the St. Patrick's Day we all know was established. But very little is known about who he actually was. According to Marion Casey, a clinical assistant professor of Irish studies at New York University, we know that he was a Roman citizen because Britain was Roman then. And then he was enslaved and taken to Ireland, where he either escaped or was released, Casey says. And then he became a priest and went back to Ireland, where he had a lot of luck converting the Druid culture into Christians. Legend says St. Patrick was actually born Mawin II, but that he changed his name to Patricus, or Patrick, which comes from the Latin term for father figure, after he became a priest. And that this supposed luck of his is the root of all the theme merchandise for St. Patrick's Day. Around the 1720s, the church finally got kind of out of control, Casey says. It was to remind celebrants what the holiday actually stood for, that the church associated a botanical item customary for all saints with St. Patrick, making him the symbol for the lucky shamrock. Modern-day celebrations continued to begin during the rush of the 1700s. In 1762, the first New York parade took place. It wasn't until 1798, the year of the Irish Rebellion, the color green became officially associated with the day. With the day. Up until the rebellion, the color associated with St. Patrick's Day was blue, as it was both in the royal court and the internet Irish flags. But as the British wore red, the Irish chose to wear green, and they sang the song, The Wearing of the Green, during the rebellion, cementing the color's relevance in Irish history. Now you know all you need to know about St. Patrick's Day. Thank you for watching. There are many special days in March, but here are eight of those special days. On March 2nd, it is World Teen Wellness Day and Dr. Seuss Day. This day is to bring attention to the mental health issues of teens and to celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday by encouraging children to read. On March 3rd, it is National Anthem Day. It is the day that the United States declared the Star Spangled Banner and its national anthem. On March 8th, it is International Women's Day. This day is to provide the honor to women for their daily contribution to this country. On March 10th, it is known as the National Mario Day. The day is about the all-known video game character, Super Mario. On March 14th, or the second Sunday of March, it is Daylight Savings Time. This is when most of the US changes their clocks to suit the daylight hours, by switching one hour from the morning to the evening. Of course, on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. This day is about a saint named St. Patrick who helped spread Christianity all throughout Ireland. March 20th is when spring begins. This is when the seasons go from winter to spring. That will be all for this video, and I'll talk to you all later. To make oatmeal or using cookies, start by beating together half a cup of brown sugar, a third cup of granulated sugar, and a stick of butter. Then add in the egg and one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Make sure to give the bowl a scrape down. Next, sift together the dry ingredients listed on the screen. Don't forget to whisk so that the cinnamon gets well incorporated.
Gradually mix the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. Fold in the oats and the raisins. Set aside to chill for one hour. Roll the dough into one, one tablespoon sized balls as shown on the screen. Bake at 375 degrees for 10 minutes. They are then when they are golden brown on the sides. And that's it. Enjoy Lobos. Let's make an Easter custom Starbucks cup. Let's gather our tools. We'll need a sticky mat, Cricut weeding tools, transfer tape, and the Starbucks cup. Most of all, our vinyl. Now let's gather our vinyl and Cricut design space. We'll be crafting Mickey and Minnie Easter buttons. Once that's ready, we get each piece of vinyl and put it onto the mat so that the Cricut can cut each piece. Once it's done cutting, we press the arrow button and it lets it go. These are our vinyl pieces. Now we begin to layer our vinyl pieces onto our backing. Preferably, I don't really have a pattern of color or preference of starting. I just go with however. But here I started with the suit, then the face, then as you can see, the little details on Minnie's egg basket. Since there is no shape or form of how Minnie's eggs are supposed to go on her egg basket, I usually print off a piece of paper of the design so I can know how to put it exactly. Now these are our results. I then continue by using transfer tape to transfer each vinyl decal onto the Starbucks cup. I use my squeegee from Cricut to slide it down on the cup and then I slowly pull away the transfer tape. Now this is the result of our Mickey and Minnie Easter Bunny Starbucks cup. Now let's close our Cricut and to craft another time. Want your video to look like this? Then keep on watching. Hi, I'm your dear Romero, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make a very cool translation video. Let's get started. Start by looking up the person's name that you want to make a video edit on and start saving as many pictures as you can. The more pictures, the more better the video will be. Once you're done saving all the pictures to your phone, you are going to download an app called CapCut. Click on New Project and start adding the pictures that you want to be in your video. Once you are done adding the picture, you're going to click on a the picture, then drag it until you have 0 0.2 seconds. Once you're done with that, you're going to click on the picture again, click on animation, then click combo, and then go until you see the word I put on the screen right here. Once you find it, you're going to click on it, and then continue on to all your photo. Once you're done, you have something like this. Hey Lobos, it's Dominic and this is your lightning round of movies to watch on St. Patrick's Day. The first movie I recommend is Darby O'Gill and the Little People. It is based on Darby who was just fired and he doesn't want to tell his daughter, Katie, that his position has been taken by a younger man. Then on his way home, Darby slips through a portal to the land of the Little People. There he meets the Leprechaun King Brian and winds up accidentally bringing this little thing home with him. Darby then demands Brian grant him three wishes, but the request brings Darby bittersweet and unexpected results. Now, the second movie I recommend is Leprechaun. This is an all-comedy horror movie and is based on Dan O'Grady returning to the U.S. after selling some Irish leprechauns pot of gold. Now, he's thinking he can settle down and enjoy his new wealth, and that's where he thought wrong. The leprechaun had followed him home and starts requesting for his gold. However, Dan would have returned the gold and barely gets away with his life, having locked away the monster in the basement. Ten years go by, JD and his spoiled daughter Tori move in. 
By accident, the leprechaun is released and almost immediately the annoying creature starts to look for his gold. And he is not displaying any respect for human life. So if you cross him, <laughs> you're done. And that wraps me up. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Lobos. Ah, I swear that intro is so fun to do. Anyway, what's up, guys? It's your boy Sid Tokyo, and today we're gonna get a little scary. Now we're talking about the game Phasmophobia. Now Phasmophobia is a four-player online co-op psychological horror. Paranormal activity is on the rise, and it's up to you and your team to use all your ghost hunting equipment at your disposal. Use this equipment in order to gather as much evidence as you can. Now this game is without a doubt scary. When you're alone, only when you're alone. If you're with a group of friends, it's actually kind of fun, and you won't be as freaked out as I was uh, in this clip here. <laughs> uh. Oh no, no, no! Oh no! I'm dead! I'm di I'm dying! 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 It's not a fun time when your friend just leaves you in a house alone with a ghost. Now, as you can see, this game does not require you to have four people. You can play with two or three, even by yourself if you please. When you first boot up the game, you'll start at level one with no money. Money is something you need to buy equipment like cameras, crucifixes, thermometers, and other ghost hunting like equipment. Your level determines the locations you can ghost hunt. Since I was only level 16, I didn't have any super big maps like the abandoned prison or the school. But low levels do get to go in neighborhood houses or even a farmhouse. Once you get to a location, you should first look at the whiteboard for info on the ghost's name. Saying its name will anger and making it easier for you to figure out what type of ghost it is. But you also need to use that equipment that you bought with your money to pinpoint that, exa that exact ghost type. For example, EMF level 5, spirit box, and ghost orbs indicates a gin. If you get the ghost correct, you earn money to buy better or more equipment for your next hunt. If this game piques your interest, it is available on Steam for 15 bucks. Now that's all I have for you this week. Next week I will be going over Monster Hunter World. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hello guys, welcome back to Konami Code. I'm your host Ramon Sierra, and today we're going to be talking about Shonen Jump's Jump Force, developed by Spike Chunsoft and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. Of course, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the gameplay, so without further ado, let's get straight into this review. The combat in Jump Force is flashy, fast-paced, and satisfying. The game brings that anime feel that you would expect, the combat is easy to pick up and learn, each character is unique, and their movements and attacks are true to the source material. There's a wide range of special attacks, like Naruto's Rasengan and Goku's Kamehameha. The graphics and animations look amazing only when fighting. There are over 40 fighters in the game, spanning over 16 anime series. From Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, my Hero Academia, and the list goes on. The fighting arenas are huge. They're based off a variety of classic anime locations like the Hidden Leaf Village, World Tournament Stage, the Final Valley, etc. And various locations in the real world like New York, Paris, San Francisco, etc. And if you hit your opponent hard enough, you can execute a stage transition allowing you to send your opponent flying through the air and through buildings. Jump Force allows you to build your own fighter from the ground up. You can change their hairstyle, their skin tone, their eye color, etc. You can buy clothes and even buy special attacks for your character. Jump Force had so much potential, but the game was sadly brought down due to the following. Jump Force's story is rather lackluster. The lips don't sync well with the dialogue, the cutscenes switch between fully voiced interactions and subtitle only conversations, and most of the cutscenes are subtitle only. And to put the cherry on top, story-wise, you're not even given a set of directions to where you have to go for the story to continue. You're basically just wandering all around the lobby, going from sector to sector, trying to find out where the next mission is. The character animations outside of combat are bad, 
the enemy AI is just bad at times. There are a lot of frame rate drops and no way to skip cutscenes. The load times are long and there is no English dub. There are microtransactions and paid DLC in Jump Force. Those DLCs mainly being character passes that cost between $15 to $18. I rate Shonen Jump's Jump Force a 6 out of 10. Jump Force is a game that was a good concept, but stumbled on the execution. The fighting is fun for a few hours before it starts to become repetitive. The game has more bad qualities than good ones, but fighting online and locally is a saving grace for Jump Force. Again, this was Konami Code, and I'll catch you all next time. a long life.